Hello everyone, what is going on? It is Brad Fusion here and welcome back to more Game of Thrones. So before I jump into today's episode, just a quick recap on the last episode. We had an argument between Ethan, the new Lord Forester, uh, against the White Wall, which was the kind of the Lord of the Guards that were killed uh, in the first or second episode of the show, as one of the main characters was defending his father, well more so ven uh, revenging his father's death on the soldiers that killed him. But I stood my ground, so I'm pretty sure I probably pissed off the White Wall banner or the White Wall house. So they're probably going to get Bolton down here and just ruin everything, but we'll have to see that. Right now we're playing as, I'm not going to say Lady Forrester, but one of the ladies from Forrester family. I believe it's the sister of Ethan. Or maybe it's not the sister. I think it is a sister. I can't entirely remember. But we just met up with Lady, Lady Marjorie and we're going out to discuss something apparently that's important. So let us jump into today's episode and hopefully have a little bit of fun. From the day you arrived in Highgarden, I thought of you more as a friend than as my handmaiden. A dear friend, in fact. Thank you, my lady. And you know how I feel about what's happened to your family. I feel your pain as if it were my own. What you've suffered is beyond imagining. You're very kind, my lady. Of course, Mira, but you must not despair. We will get through this together. You must understand there are limits to what I can say, especially here in King's Landing, now that I am to be queen. To have a handmaiden from the North whose family fought for Rob Stark. It raises questions at a time I can least afford. Cersei herself cornered me this morning outside the Royal Sept. She mentioned the northern girl in my service, and she painted you a traitor. She was very pleased with herself. What does she intend to do? <sighs> she intends to make you miserable, knowing that will make me miserable as well. She demands an audience. She wants an apology of some sort, for what I don't know, but she's waiting for us now, and I promised I would bring you to her. I wouldn't ask this of you if it were not important. I cannot afford any conflict with Cersei with the wedding so near. What do I say? Find a way to appease her. Humor her. Tell her what she wants to hear. See if the Queen Regent is ready to receive us. You'll be fine. I know you will. You may feel one thing, but you must say another. Good luck. You can do this. Ah, Lady Marjorie. Aren't you looking lovely this evening? Lord Tyrion. Your Grace? With your permission, Allow me to introduce Lady Mira of House Forrester. I am honored, Your Grace. Hmm. Yet not honored enough to kneel, I see. House Forrester is a northern house loyal to the King. Are they? I beg your pardon, Your Grace. I wasn't talking to you. I want to hear from the girl. Is your family loyal to the King? Perhaps you should ask the new Lord Forrester. He's not here, is he? She is. House Forrester's loyalty to the Crown never wavers, Your Grace. I see. And yet. For centuries, the Foresters have been loyal bannermen to House Stark. A house of traitors. They were the Wardens of the North. We all served at the pleasure of the King. Clever girl. 
Perhaps too clever for her own good. The girl did say the loyalty was unwavering. She has a talent for equivocation, yet I question what she really thinks. Is your house willing to swear fealty to your new liege lord, Roos Bolton? He is the Warden of the North, Your Grace. He is. And I the Queen Regent, and Tyrion the Master of Coin. The girl has a remarkable talent for answering questions, while in fact saying nothing at all. Old allegiances are not easily abandoned. But now that the war is over, we must look to rebuild and forge new alliances. There are ships and shields to be built, and Joffrey will need a steady supply of ironwood for his armies. I'm told there are others who would happily serve that purpose, but I trust we can rely on House Forrester. Forrester Ironwood does seem rather unique. To our mutual benefit, Your Grace. And at the pleasure of your king. It would be a shame to see it fall into the hands of another house. I imagine you'd do almost anything to prevent that from happening, wouldn't you? Ask any Lannister, and they'd do whatever was necessary to save Casterly Rock. It would be unfortunate to see another house lay claim to what's yours. Or nothing, perhaps. It's hard to tell either way. What would you have the girl do, Cersei? It's not as if she fought beside the Starks, wielding a battle axe for the Northern Army. It raises an interesting question, I suppose. Can we truly blame those who end up on the wrong side of the war? Our dear Marjorie here was betrothed to Renly Baratheon on the false assumption that he would one day rule the Seven Kingdoms. Can we fault her for her mistake? Should she be held accountable? I won't judge her, Your Grace. I wasn't there. I didn't face her decisions. Aren't you a delightful girl? If only one could flit through life without ever holding an opinion of their own. If there's a point to this, I hope you find it quickly. Loyalty can be such a hard thing to define. This city alone is filled with all sorts of ambitious opportunists looking to reinvent themselves. Pretending to be something they're not. Who knows what lurks within their hearts. You are a girl from the North, here in service to Lady Marjorie. One can only assume her interests are yours. Yet loyalty to a king, that must be absolute, beyond question. And if your loyalties were to become conflicted between your king and the very person whom you serve, what would you do then? I'm sure she Let would- Let the girl answer the question. Go on. My loyalties would never conflict, Your Grace. That's a coward's answer. I will not have my time wasted by a northern girl who thinks she can play games. Who do you choose? I must choose Marjorie, Your Grace. Clearly your handmaiden does not have her priorities straight. She is a threat to the crown, isn't she? The most dangerous handmaiden in all of King's Landing. I'm not quite sure what to make of her. Not surprising, I suppose, for a northern girl. But not very encouraging, either. I'd like a word with you, if I may. Of course, Your Grace. I'll walk you out. This may come as a surprise, but I met your father once, at the tourney at Lannisport. Even then he didn't trust Ruse Bolton. We only spoke briefly, but your father struck me as an honorable man. You have my condolences for his loss. These would be trying times for your family, even under the best of circumstances. Thank you, Lord Tyrion. That's very kind of you to say. You were brave to declare your loyalty to Lady Marjorie. No doubt she was pleased, but Cersei, she will not soon forget what you said. It was quite the first impression. I, of course, found it all highly entertaining. I wasn't trying to please her. I think that was clear to everyone. My sister and I have our differences, 
She takes great pleasure in her little charades. I take mine in thwarting them. We must find our amusements where we can. She threatened to give your ironwood to another house. It is the master of coin who decides such matters. The crown needs boats. Boats need wood, and I speak for the crown in this regard. Not her. I wouldn't want to anger Cersei. And you'd be wise not to. But I suppose the crown could be persuaded to secure ironwood from House Forrester. Lady Marjorie might not look favorably on such an alliance. And it would infuriate Cersei. Although what would be amusing for me might prove rather dangerous for you and your house. Are you willing to risk that? It may be far too dangerous. In fact, forget I even suggested such a thing. I'm sorry, Lord Tyrion. But it's a risk I cannot afford. I admire your discretion. Now, if you'll excuse me, I promised Sansa I would join her for dinner tonight. Three beautiful bottles of Dornish wine await my arrival. I hope we meet again. Nothing would make Cersei happier. Until then, be careful. This is not the North. King's Landing can be a nest of vipers to the uninitiated. Mira, I was worried. How was it? Cersei has a way of looking at you as though you're nothing. It's more than a little intimidating. It didn't go very well. I'm sorry. Cersei is known for being rather difficult. But at least it's over now. Lady Marjorie has spent the entire day working on seating arrangements for the wedding. Of course, you and I are seated way at the back. Here with the fourth cousins and the ninth born sons. Ah. Sir Jamie, I wouldn't mind tarnishing that white cloak of his. Sarah? <laughs> what? It's true. And Oberyn Martell, the Red Viper. I'm told he has a paramour, which I doubt is Dornish for wife. He is quite handsome. And quite passionate, from what I've heard. Perhaps Lady Marjorie could make the right introductions. Who knows? We might meet our future husbands. Although, marrying a king, I can only imagine what that would be like. Would you marry Joffrey if it meant you'd become queen? He does have a certain look about him. And he's always treated Lady Marjorie well. I don't want to be queen no matter who I'd have to marry. Don't want to be queen? You northerners. You'd make a perfect scepter. Well, I would marry him. Imagine the power you would have as Queen of the Seven Kingdoms. I might even allow you to be my handmaiden. Let's see, who else should we marry off? Brian of Tarth and Tyrion Lannister. <laughs> what a perfect match! Sir Bronn and... What are you doing? Well? Sarah? We're sorry, my lady. We were just having fun. This is not a game. It's a battle plan. Allies and enemies can be made with every move. Yet they say it is men who are powerful. The Queen was... rather disappointed by your display, Mira. I'm just glad it's over. King's Landing can be exhausting sometimes. There's always someone to please or some perceived slight to smooth over. I fear it will only get worse when I am queen. Once they know your true heart, the lords and ladies will have no choice but to love you. Do you agree? Once you are queen, the lords and ladies will do their best to please you. You learn very quickly. 
Your words to Cersei were brave, but I know you must fear what the Boltons might do to your family. I do appreciate your willingness to appease her, as difficult as it may have been. Thank you, my lady. There's been something on my mind. Something important. I... I did have a favor to ask of you in return. Whatever you wish to say, you can say it in front of Sarah. There are no secrets between us. It's about my family. I trust her. Go on. Ask. Forgive me, my lady. I wouldn't otherwise ask this of you, but my mother insisted. It's about my family. Ramsay Snow. What would you have me do? My mother fears our family will suffer if Ramsay is left to do as he likes. She thought, if a raven could be sent to the Boltons to let them know House Forrester has the protection of the Crown. I know it's a lot to ask of you, and I wouldn't otherwise, but she insisted. That is no small request, especially now. I know, my lady, and I wouldn't ask this of you otherwise. But my mother has left me no choice. She insisted. Joffrey knows only too well your family fought for the Starks. And now you would have me ask him to intervene. Is the situation that dire? You can't, my lady. King Joffrey won't like it. Just think how he turned on Lady Sansa. My mother feels it is urgent, my lady. She's unfamiliar with King's Landing and its politics. I hope you can understand that. Very well. I'll make your request, but I cannot promise anything. Thank you, my lady. I will send a raven to my family at once. So I feel this is the best time as any to leave off this episode. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it so far. I have made a few, I'm not going to say bad decisions, but with the conversation with Cersei at the beginning of the episode, I once I figured out that if I slightly annoyed Cersei, Tyrion would jump in and say some more of his snarky lines, so I kind of went slightly towards annoying her, but saying what I felt was kind of, I like, like I said before, I, I'm kind of staying in the grey area of things, but I feel that slightly annoying her gave me the results I'd like to see, because Tyrion kind of jumped in there. And so, the stuff Tyrion says throughout both the TV show and this game is just hilarious, so... I'm kind of glad I went down that path, just to hear Tyrion's lines. But at the same time, I'm probably going to regret what Cersei's going to do a little bit later on. Uh, I feel that that may kind of come back as some sort of bad uh, backlash. But uh, other than that though, I'm not too sure how I feel about asking uh, Lady Bantry for her help at the end there. I could have ignored it, but I wasn't too sure what I was asking you for help for, because for whatever reason in my mind, the mother's letter just went completely blank and I forgot about it. So I was, I was like, what am I asking her for help for? So I clicked it anyways just to see, and then I figured out, yeah, that's what it was about. I'm not too sure how I feel about that, because I know, I know Large Lady Marjorie feels kind of respectful towards what I was saying in the halls there, even though I didn't really ap appease Cersei's. Uh, so I, I think she kind of leans towards the fact of, yes, I will do this because you kind of stood up for me back there and you did plead your al uh, allegiance to me. So I, I think in that way, I, it may have worked out rather well for me, but not in the fact that Cersei's is now really pissed off. So she might try to stop Joffrey from doing whatever Lady Marjorie's going to ask her. And I'm kind of, I want to see if Oberon's going to be in this as well, because I actually love Oberon as a character in the TV show. Uh, I'm not going to spoil anything about the TV show because this is set before... Uh, he's actually introduced, I believe, anyways, before we actually see him in the TV show. It's odd, because Tyrion, uh, Tyrion has his scar, which I can't remember when he got that on his face. I know it was during a specific fight, I know what fight it was, I just can't, couldn't remember that it was that early on in the TV show. 
But I want to see Oberon because Oberon is probably my favorite character just because of his attitude, the way he talks, the way he acts, and even the weapon he wields, which is the the spear, which I, I think is a, um, a cool weapon. Actually, I like halberds a lot better than spears. But anyway, enough rambling on about that. Hopefully, I'll see him at some point during this episode, during the series more so. Uh, but I'll leave that here. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Stay awesome, everyone. And if you liked the video, feel free to leave a like. And if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and stay awesome, everyone.